I got a call from a guy I don't know. I've been watching you. You know, seeing you around town. Yeah, you caught my eye all right. I like your style. I think your face is really cute too. So cute. I just had to take some photos. So listen, I was thinking you and I should meet up and have a little fun. How about your place? You know the worst thing about that creep's call? The way he spoke with a smile. You can hear it in people's voices, even if you can't see their faces. I could tell that his call was bringing him some kind of satisfaction. Well, I decided to end that. I wasn't going to help him out, so to speak. I just considered it a prank. So I intended to hang up, but before I did, he spoke again in a much more serious tone, as if he had anticipated my next move. Your height is 170 centimeters, 5 foot 7. Your weight, 117 pounds, 52.9 kg. B cup bra. And your full name is Rizako Sagaya. <laughs> Even if you think you don't know me, you must know that I know you. I know you quite well. I was shocked into stunned silence. Everything that faceless voice on the other end of the line said about me was true, right down to the centimeters and the pounds. How? was the resounding question in my mind. Before I looked for an answer, I hung up on him. Then I gathered up some things, threw them in my overnight bag, and headed out. I didn't know where the hell to go. I didn't know if I would be off to my parents or someplace else. I just needed to leave my place. I guess that going to my parents' house would have been a terrible idea. I mean, if the guy knew my bra size. He probably knew exactly where they lived. I decided to stay with a friend. I gave her a call whilst I fast walked to the subway. While I was on the phone sorting out my place to stay for the night, I had several notifications of incoming calls and I declined each of them. I sent them straight to voicemail. Later at my friend's house, after calming down with a glass of wine or two, I summoned the courage to play the messages he left for me. Hey, don't ignore me. I bought you underwear. I want to give it to you. So, how are we going to organize this? That was the gist of the several messages he left for me that night. There were worse things, but I don't feel like I want to get into them. I did move after that, initially, and with my friend, but then into my own place. I changed my number too. This happened a little while ago, but I'm worried that he could be out there somewhere, looking for me, taking more photos of me. Last summer, I took a vacation with my girlfriend. We decided to go camping in Naskogen. It's a place out in the mountains of Japan. I heard about this area from a new guy at work. I ended up becoming good friends with that guy. We decided to go in a group. Camping is much more fun that way anyway. There were three men and two women in our group. Everyone but their partners worked at my company, so to be honest, we were a little lucky to get the time off at the same time. Everything went smoothly. I had just started dating my girlfriend, and I thought it was a great idea and a chance to introduce her to some of my friends. I was wrong. Oh, we had a great start to our trip. It was every bit as beautiful as my colleague and friend described. There was a safari park. It was amazing to see so many animals up close. We also went to the theme park, rode some roller coasters, and capped off the night with fireworks and a campfire cooked curry. Pretty perfect, if you ask me. We played cards and drank until late, and I had no trouble falling asleep listening to the fire crackle away. I fell asleep in the clothes I wore that day. That night I dreamed. A dream where someone was calling my name and shaking me. Then the dream became reality. My phone was buzzing in my pocket. My phone is always set to silent, but with the vibrate function on, so thankfully it didn't wake everybody up. I reached for my phone and took a look at the caller display to see who was calling. It said that the call was coming from home, 
I really didn't understand why someone was calling me so late. Even though I was half asleep, my mind went to panic mode. I know that there is always a bad reason behind a call coming late at night. I worried for my parents. Just as I pressed the answer button, the call ended. I checked my notifications and I had three missed calls coming from home. I headed out of the tent as not to wake my girlfriend and I hit redial. It was cold and the wind was howling out there that night. I wanted to get back in the tent, but I just couldn't leave it. However, no one picked up, no matter how many times I attempted to call back. Someone had been so desperate to get in touch with me, yet, when I tried to call back, I got nothing but that hollow boo boo sound. Mum? Dad? Sis? What's going on? Are you all okay? These thoughts were swirling around my head. I was about to try my sister's cell phone, but then I noticed something. Something that disturbed me. In my groggy, half-awake state, I failed to notice something. I had made a change in my contacts list. I had been living alone for a while, yet I never really considered my apartment as home, you know? So I kept my family home registered as home in my phone. It wasn't until recently when I got sick of trying to memorize my apartment's house phone number that I saved it in my phone as home and I changed my parents' home number to mum and dad's. So with this realization, I stopped pacing back and forth, waiting for someone to pick up, and I stood still. I didn't have a second key to my apartment. Three calls came from my apartment, an apartment which, as far as I knew, should be empty. I thought of my apartment, lights off still at night. Could someone really be calling me from there? I decided to wake my girlfriend up and let her know what was going on. To be honest, I just needed to speak to someone. It was really confusing. I spoke to her about what I thought was going on. I guessed that there might be an intruder or something in my apartment. I decided that if they called back, then I would definitely answer the call, but I didn't get another call that night. I stared at the phone until it got bright out, but it didn't vibrate again. When we headed home in the morning, my girlfriend and I got into a huge fight. She had it in her mind that... I had another girlfriend, and, and that was her calling while we were away. She also believed that, because I only had the one key to my apartment, I must have given the fictional girlfriend my spare key. No matter what I said, she didn't believe me. I even offered her to be there when I opened my apartment door. I offered her to look over the place, but no matter what I suggested, she wasn't interested. There was no reasoning with her. Hell hath no fury. We broke up very quickly after the trip. What she thought that I had done turned out to be irreparable. What the hell was that phone call about? My theory of it being an intruder or a thief fell down when I realized, why the hell would a thief call my cell phone number? A number I guessed that they wouldn't likely have to hand. Plus, which burglar stops to make calls? Does someone I know have a copy of my key? Or is this just going to go down as an unsolved mystery? Either way, it freaks me out. I try not to think about it at night. I moved home after a month or so. I couldn't stand the idea that there could be someone with a duplicate key. And I didn't like thinking about something paranormal going on in my place either. Now the reason I'm sharing this experience is because something about that trip came back to me the other day. A small thing that, if it wasn't for what happened, I likely wouldn't have remembered. My girlfriend and I had had an argument on the way to the campsite. She said that I had called her and I didn't, so we had this kind of cute back and forth thing over who called who. In the end, I conceded defeat and I said something like, Hey, if I called you, I just don't remember doing it. Maybe whoever called me that day called her. Both calls came from my apartment's phone. Nothing weird has happened in my new place, so I guess that whatever was happening, it's tied to my old place. I kept the number for my old place saved in my phone on the off chance that someone might call back, but so far no one has. I don't know what that was, but it doesn't feel like a person broke in to call me. I guess I'll never know.
A while back, the guy I was dating had his car broken into. Someone stole his wallet. It had his driver's license and all his cards in there. He filed a police report, but the officer said that there have been a number of reported thefts in the area at the time. There was no investigation. Nothing could be done about it, apparently. About six months after the break-in, I got a call from someone claiming to be a police officer. He told me that a large number of wallets and purses had been found in a trash can at a rest area just off of the National Highway. He said that my boyfriend's wallet was one of the ones they recovered. The policeman said that he had been trying to contact my boyfriend. He said that he called the number on his driver's license, but he was unable to reach him. I mean, he did change numbers at one point in those six months that had passed. He said that he found my business card in the wallet and a photo of me. My boyfriend carried around a photo I had done for my passport. I hated it, but he liked it for some reason. Also, my business card has my company photo on it. So, for the officer, I guess it was natural to try the number on the business card. The officer said he would meet me someplace to deliver the wallet. He said that the wallet was being held in a police station which was a couple hours drive from my town. He said that he would meet me in a coffee shop just on the outskirts of town. I knew the place, it wasn't an impressive coffee shop, it was kind of run down to be honest. So this officer was happy to go out of his way to deliver the wallet to me at a coffee shop but not at my local police station. That seemed a little weird. Why would he not deliver it to my boyfriend? I told him I was happy to get the wallet from the police station if he dropped it off there. It felt wrong, so I told him I wasn't going to go meet him at the coffee shop, and with that I hung up. I called the police station the officer said that the wallet was being held in to see if I could make arrangements to come and collect it. They confirmed that the wallet had been found in the trash can, with many others, at the rest area. I asked why an officer was calling me to arrange a meeting at a coffee shop. The officer I was speaking to was taken aback. He said that it would be impossible for an officer to make an exchange like that. He said only the owner of the wallet would be allowed to collect it. This was very different to what the other officer had said to me. I immediately thought to myself, what would have happened if I went to that isolated coffee shop by myself? That thought sent chills racing through my body. I guess that either the police officer was doing something completely against the rules by offering to meet me, or the thief was the one trying to arrange a meeting. It was a really weird experience for me and one that frightens me when I think back to it. I'm glad that I took a second to think before I acted. Who knows what the man on the other end of the line had in store for me. I wrote a little something for my local newspaper. I was pretty proud of it, to be honest. I was overwhelmed when the newspaper contacted me and informed me that they had received some praise for my work. Back when this happened, I was a regular writer. I used to write about anything that took my interest. That meant that I read just about as much as I wrote. I was subscribed to all the major newspapers and journals. So you must understand that when I received a compliment, or whatever the best word to describe that is, <laughs> I'm supposed to be a writer, anyway, when I received an accolade for my writing, I was over the moon. I was so happy. The guy who called me to tell me the good news said that the person who praised my work wished to contact me directly. I said, yeah, sure, please pass on my information. Oh man, what a smart move that was. I received a letter at my home address from a guy in his 50s. I don't know how to best describe it, but the tone of his writing was serious, sober, earnest. The guy was honest. He wasn't gushing with praise either, he was just unrelentingly himself. He said that he was a writer for a minor newspaper. He sounded like, I don't know, a peer maybe, so I replied to him. Also, writing was fun, I thought nothing of it. I mean, how was I not going to reply to my first compliment as a writer? A few days after I sent my reply, I started to get strange calls. Silent calls at first, but then I started to hear heavy breathing. It was gross. They started to become so regular that I decided to send most of my incoming calls to my answer phone. I got so sick of seeing my answer phone blinking and playing back these weird messages. 
One thing I could count on was the regular letters from the guy who praised my writing. It became a daily routine. He even wrote his phone number at the top of each letter. I didn't take much notice of it at the time, as I just assumed the two incidences were unrelated. We had caller ID. I saw the prank caller's number, but I didn't ever call it back. One day, one of these prank calls came during the day, and I happened to be on a day off, so I went over to take note of the number that was calling. I was horrified to realize that the number seemed oddly familiar. The digits were reminiscent of the ones I had seen at the top of the letter the guy in his 50s sent me in praise of my work. I thought, what? Why is this guy doing this? I decided to answer the call this time. I had one of the guy's letters on my desk so I could verify the number. This was the guy who was messing with me? When I picked up the phone, I heard the male voice chuckle like a drain. So I went on the attack. I said, what the hell is this? Or something like that. There was nothing but silence on the line. And then, after perhaps 30 seconds or more, I heard a male voice say, <laughs> Are you scared? I hung up. I couldn't deal with that. I was scared, but I wasn't going to give that creep the victory. In his letters, he was nice, professional, and gentlemanly. He was something worse on the phone. Something I didn't imagine. Something that put me off writing. You'll note at the start, I said I used to enjoy writing. I don't anymore. My husband said that he would be happy to reply to any letter from that creep, and I think it only took one letter or two from my husband to put a stop to that weirdo. But oh well. Yeah, at least it's over with. When I was in my second year of high school, I used to go down to the park with my friends together and we would mess around. We used to play football for hours down in the park, with only the street light to see our way. It was fun. But my favorite thing we used to do down the park was prank calling random numbers. This happened a while ago, when mobile phones weren't that common. I was the only one of my friends who owned one. So when we were done playing football, we would all gather around my phone and dial random numbers. It's really dumb, but we would always wait and hope for a girl to answer the phone. Anytime we spoke to a guy, we just hung up or try to annoy them. Once we were speaking to a girl, I would do the talking and my friends would listen, trying to stifle their laughter. Sometimes they would lead the call too, but it was usually me since it was my phone. Thinking back on it now, it was really an annoying, immature thing to do. I mean, we must have irritated a bunch of people, but hey, I can't change the past. Okay, here's the cringy part. I always thought that I would call up a girl and we would fall in love and that was really appealing to me since I wouldn't know what she looked like. I would just go on the sound of her voice and her personality. So making those calls in the park turned out to be quite the thrill for me and my friends because we never knew what kind of person we would be speaking to. Sometimes it could be an argument with an old man and other times it could be something entirely different. There was one call I'll always remember. Some girl said, is that you, Kai? And I replied, yeah, it's me. Then she just burst out crying and wouldn't stop for like three minutes straight. Turns out that Kai was her late boyfriend. He had only just recently passed away. I felt really bad about that. One night, I typed in a phone number which wasn't that different to my own. I just took out a few of my numbers for some random ones. I managed to get a girl on the line. I could tell right from the start that she was the kind of quiet type. I was always nervous when I got a girl on the phone. The conversation always started off rough as there was a kind of air of tension to the call. I was a young lad and I wasn't all that confident speaking to girls, I guess. So I started speaking with the quiet girl and as per usual, my friends began to gather around and listen in and the conversation went something like this. Hello? Hey, <laughs> sorry, I know it's late, uh, but you're awake. How is it going? What are you up to? Huh? Who's this? Who, she says. It's me. 
If you don't tell me who you are, I'll just hang up. Hang on, hang on. Just give me a minute here. Look, I'll come clean. I got the wrong number, but if you're free, why don't we talk for a while? Ah, uh, that's pretty random, but okay. I'll talk for a bit, since I am bored. We ended up talking on the phone until late. It was really nice. I even left my friends to keep speaking to her in private. We spoke about all kinds of different things. I found out that she was in the same year as me at school, and she said that she didn't live all that far away from my town either. It was amazing. Because we were complete strangers, we were still kind of wary of what information would be appropriate to share, and even though we didn't mention street names or anything like that, I had a rough idea of where she lived. The conversation only ended when my battery ran low. I ended the call by asking for her name. It was Anna. And we said goodbye. We promised each other we would stay in touch. To me, at the time, it looked like my romantic dream was becoming a reality. I went back to my friends and told them all about the conversation I had. They then proceeded to tease me, but it was all good though. On the walk home, I kept thinking of Anna. I was daydreaming of what could be. I mean, to me, it was kind of a bit of harmless, semi-romantic fun. I just hoped that I didn't take it too far or something, you know? But I was still already kind of looking forward to the next time I would speak to her, whenever that might be. I didn't have to wait long to hear from her, though. The day after first contact with Anna, she called me. Hey, I just want to check in. How's it going? What are you up to now? Oh, hey, it's lunch break at school. You called back quick. Is anything up? Has something got to be up for a girlfriend to call her boyfriend? <laughs> I was astounded by that leap she had just made. I mean, we didn't agree to date over the phone. It seemed a little out of the blue. Oh, damn, I guess I messed up. I didn't really know what to say. Um, are you maybe mistaking me for somebody else? Mistake? Mistake? What mistake? We spoke so much on the phone. How could you think that we're not together? Well, the thing is, I don't know you, and I don't really know what you look like. I haven't... we haven't met yet, so I guess... I guess it's not right to say we're dating. It's like that. Well, I can fix that. Why don't we meet up today, then? Actually, I can't today. I have to stay late at school. I have football practice. Can I just ask something? Are you the same girl I spoke to yesterday? There's... like, there's something off, you know? The vibe feels a little different here, and your voice sounds a little different, too. Are you really Anna? It was true. It sounded as if I was speaking to someone totally different. I was confused. There was silence for a couple more moments, and then Anna replied. Really? Who are you to say what is real and what isn't? Do you know who I am? Do you even want to know? I don't even know who I truly am. Do you want to know what I'm capable of? Do you have any idea? It would be a terrible idea. Not to take me seriously, okay? As you know, I can be nice, but I can also be brutal. She went off like that for ages. It barely made sense. I just froze up. She was working herself up and up and getting madder and madder and more incoherent. I just couldn't stand it. I hung up on her. I turned off the phone. And I didn't turn it on again until the following night. I was freaked out by that girl. She didn't sound like she did the night before. I headed down to the park to play with my friends later that night. I wanted to tell them about what happened. In the end, we concluded that since I didn't share any personal information and Anna doesn't really know where I live, then I would probably be fine. So with that realization, I decided to turn on my phone again. As soon as it finished booting up, I had an incoming call. It was coming from Anna. I was freaking out. Her threats from yesterday were still fresh in my mind. I asked if my friends would answer the phone, but they all refused. She just kept calling and calling. I needed to use my phone sooner or later, so I made the decision to take her call. I thought that I could apologize and we could put this matter to bed. Oh, you finally answered the phone. Where the hell have you been? Look, I'm sorry for hanging up on you yesterday. It was bad. Pretty much everything I've done, including calling you, has been a bad idea. I have to admit that. I am sorry. The other thing is I can't be your boyfriend. I won't call you again and... I don't want you to call me again, too. Once again, sorry about all of this. <laughs> Even if those are your intentions, it's not an option. You don't get to leave me. 
Come on, let's get back on track. Let's meet. Let's keep talking. If we meet, I know you'll fall in love with me. Look, just tell me where you are. Tell me where you are now. I'll come to you. Tell me where you are. I was certain this wasn't the girl I was speaking to from before. I didn't know what to do. I had put the call on speakerphone for the benefit of my friends, and one of my friends took the initiative, and he hit the end call button. He then said, Don't take any more calls from her. She's dangerous. She didn't stop calling, though. She would call the second school finished right up until about 10pm each night for about a week. I think she was even calling when I switched off the phone at night, so it could have been even more calls. After that week, I couldn't take it anymore. I got a service on my phone which blocked specific numbers from calling. Then after that, the calls from public phone booths began. For some reason, I was unable to block public phone numbers, so I just had to deal with it. I thought that she would give up, but she didn't. There were over 200 calls from payphones. One night, I was playing with my friends again, and something dawned on me. I hadn't checked the number on the payphone in the park. I checked it, and one of the calls came from that payphone. She had been that close. I didn't play in that park for a while after that. I ended up changing my number, but most importantly, learning a lesson about prank calls. I came back from work one night to see my answer phone flashing. There was a message for me. I walked over and I hit play. I heard a woman's voice. It had a dark tone. I could hear loads of noise in the background. It sounded like she was in a place with a lot of people. And here's what she said. Ah, oh God, no, no. It's, it's just so much. I can't, I just want, why is it always me? Why does she push it all on me? I can It's only me. I can only do so much. I can't take more of this. I just... I swear. She was mumbling this sad monologue. And then after a while, it just kind of ended with a click. Back then, I didn't have caller ID. I had no idea who that troubled voice belonged to. I got a few calls over the coming days, and it made me a little nervous, to be honest. That woman's voice and her words, there was something troubling there. Every time I picked up the phone, I was expecting to hear that dark voice again. One evening, I checked my answer phone and found another message. Hello, this is customer services. Uh, I'm calling to apologize. I think I accidentally left something on your voicemail. My boss has asked me to give you a call and explain that I was in the wrong and to offer my apologies. Once again, I'm very sorry about that. Just a note from me, Jay, here. There are several levels of apology in Japan, and this call operator chose to use the strongest form. Moshiwaki gozaimasen. And now back to the story. And with that, the mystery was solved. A telemarketer must have thought that she had hung up and left a message detailing the stress that she was under. She didn't expect that message to be recorded. The issue was resolved, but when I recall that desperate voice, I wish I had the chance to speak to her. That resentful tone she had when she thought no one would hear her was in stark contrast to the smiley, customer-orientated voice. I think that day I caught a glimpse behind the mask, a brief vision of the stress this person was forced to endure. This is something that anyone can experience, something no doubt you will probably be familiar with, and even now I bet you're recalling incidences like this. But I have to say, when you hear a recording of someone else's stress out of context, it's pretty jarring. Just remember everyone, don't let it get to you. Listen to yourself. Listen to your body. <laughs> 